Well, hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to 30 Teens, 30 Dreams, and 30 Destination University. I'm your host, Dr. Cynthia Colon, founder of Dream College Academy and College Essay Bootcamp. If you are a college-bound teen or a champion of one, you are exactly where you're supposed to be. And I'm so excited that you found us because we are doing a special series live every single day of the month of April, celebrating 30 different teenagers who, seniors in high school, who've been admitted to colleges and they are choosing where they're headed off to become a freshman in the fall of this year, class of 2025. So let me introduce you to who we're going to meet today. Now, this is Christian. And Christian goes to a, a Catholic high school here in Southern California, and he's been admitted to a number of colleges and has earned nearly $800,000 in merit scholarships. Yes, he has a love for petroleum engineering. That's what he wanted to major in, and he's known that since he was a sophomore in high school. So it's just like, who would th who'd have thought that, right? But let me tell you, you're going to get to see um, a little bit behind the scenes about Christian. So we're so excited. Now, I want you to help me cheer on cheer on Christian today. And I wanted to share with you that there are, have been a couple of students who didn't want to be interviewed live. that just made them too nervous. But they certainly agreed to share their story and serve as like a case study, basically. So Christian is one of those students. So you're not going to see him live today. But... He's definitely live here with us, I promise you. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and get started and meet Christian. Look, this little cartoon. He was so excited that we were gonna make him a cartoon and uh, that petroleum engineering outfit, right? All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna just go through and use my screen here to share with you a bit about the kinds of applications he applied to. So the first question I ask all students is, give us a sense of where you applied, how did you decide on that list, and any scholarship dollars that you earned. So this here gives you a sense of the types of colleges that, that uh, Christian applied to. Now, I wanna just tell you, he was very specific in finding schools that had his major, that had what he wanted to, to study. And of course, he was looking at certain locations as well, but he mostly went by if they had the major that he wanted. So this is some of the, these are some of the schools that he applied to and was admitted to. And then here are a few more. So if you see here, he was offered merit scholarships. Now, from what I understand, and I was looking, re taking another look at his spreadsheet, most of them were just offered based on merit. So based on his grades and his curriculum, um, some maybe based on uh, any test scores, if he submitted test scores, to that institution. We know that many schools were test optional, so if he submitted testing, that might have helped as well. So these schools here, these colleges listed right here, are the institutions that offered him additional merit money. Merit money, just so you know, are, are dollars that you do not have to pay back, and they're generally, generally speaking, they're uh, given based on um, AQs, academic qualities, uh, grades and test scores and curriculum maybe. Um, some scholarships you have to maybe submit other information for, uh, for like maybe in another essays or essay questions, you have to meet a certain deadline. You might even have to interview for certain, um, for certain scholarships, but they're merit-based. Uh, so again, based on, um, you know, could be based on leadership, could be based on um, your, your interests, your majors, and it could be based on an interview that you have. But by and large, these are all uh, scholarships he earned just based on having turned in his application and having the right grades and testing that they needed for these scholarships. Okay, so the next question I typically ask students is, what did you do right along the way, uh, looking back on your journey? And so I just wanted to dissect a little bit about Christian's AQs, academic qualities. So his academic, uh, uh, for his senior year, you look here, Christian's high school offers AP courses and IB courses, international baccalaureate courses. And I will tell you that they're viewed the same when going through the college admission process. An IB course is, is just as rigorous as having an AP course. Some might even say that IB is even a little bit more rigorous, especially you see here, I noted that he is IB English, HL, HL is a little bit higher than the other one, which I want to say is SL. Uh, 
I might be wrong, but don't quote me on that. <laughs> so even here, uh, in addition to this, this list of courses, he also was taking religion because he's at a Catholic school. So you see here, Christian is taking six courses uh, in senior year. Again, I didn't list the, um, the uh, religion course. But he's taking AP Calculus BC, which is very, it's just, I always just recommend that. Anybody who's wanting to major in a STEM major, I always say your goal needs to be AP Calculus BC. So if you think about senior year and work backwards and think, okay, if I want to get to BC Calculus, what do I need to take along the way? He's got honors physics and IB sports and health science. Uh, he took, if I remember correctly, he took uh, AP um, science uh, the previous year in, as a junior. For, for this particular school, I was looking at his application. He did not submit testing. Again, testing was optional in a lot of places. Um, and so, but this particular application I looked at um, did not have any testing there. Okay, his PQs. Let's talk about his PQs. So there are more things that he was involved in than just what I've listed here, but I kind of pulled out the things that seemed to make sense and show leadership. So he was the head of the chemistry club. He was also a math tutor. He was founder of a gaming club. It's, he said it was, it was a casual um, for anyone who just wanted to participate. And he was a school leader. There were a couple of places I saw in his application where he was you know, an ambassador. Um, also, I think uh, he did some kind of like maybe a retreat leader, something in, in the faith um, area on his campus, the spiritual leadership on his campus. He also played volleyball for a bit. And then when he left volleyball, <clears throat> I actually like this. Woo. <clears throat> he didn't play volleyball all four years, but once he left volleyball, he became the volleyball manager for the girls team, if I remember correctly. So I like that sometimes, sometimes we don't like playing that sport anymore. We're not good at it or for whatever reason you want to stop <clears throat> doing something on your resume, no problem, but just make sure you pick up something else that is in line with either what you love to do or or some kind of leadership. And that's what he did there, okay? He also worked part-time. <clears throat> so I love this because I wanna tell you when I was at Vassar, uh, working at Vassar College in the admission office, one of the things um, that we would just noted was that when someone had a job, it showed a lot of just dedication and um, good work ethic. And you learn different set of lessons, life lessons when you have a part-time job. So no worries, you know, um, he didn't have a ton of like what he did in the summer, going to different summer programs and, and really, um, you know, obvious kinds of leadership with that comes with a title like, um, you know, president or captain or editor in chief. I actually think he was captain of his JV volleyball team. But having a job um, in lieu of or in addition to some of these other traditional uh, leadership roles is really a great thing to put on your resume. So I love that. <clears throat> okay, so this is why I loved this applicant, and Christian. And Christian and I, um, we worked together. I, I met him as a sophomore. He knew then he wanted to major in petroleum engineering. And so we did a family consultation. So we, we did a little bit of work in sophomore year and a little bit of work in his junior year. But uh, he's, not, he's not one that took the essay camp, but took all the skills that he learned in the um, during college academy and applied them. So what I love about rereading his essays is that they were very honest and authentic. And you can tell that a teenager wrote them. And I don't mean that in a disparaging way. I mean that in like, they just come to life because they have this sort of real teenager voice. So he writes about, in his personal statement, he writes about stealing rocks from national parks. <laughs> And he goes on, and I won't, I won't share, he talks about Hawaii and the different national parks and how he would always like to take a rock from there. And I, I'm pretty sure you're not supp supposed to take rocks. But he was young, and he took these rocks. But then fast forward a little bit later in life, still when he was young, he talks about spending lunchtime on the blacktop digging out right, white crystals with makeshift tools as if he were a geologist. So I really love this. Now we encourage students to, if you're going to write about something that happened when you were young, you've got to make a connection to something that when you're, uh, you know, more um, this age in the last few years. 
So, but anyway, when I read this essay, it's really like, it gives you a sense of like, oh, okay. Like I can see him like digging for these, you know, rocks on the, on the blacktop. I was there and it also helps me understand, oh, you know, he loved rocks. It's sort of this geology, sort of just this love of digging, right? And a petroleum engineer, well, what are they gonna do? He's gonna spend his time of his life digging. So let's look at his other essays because there was another essay that he had to do, um, which asked you about, you know, why you want to major in this. So he wrote, he wrote a very, um, pretty much a standard essay about the class that he found, found when he fell in love with his uh, wanted desired major. So he talks about falling, falling in love with chemistry class. And in that class, he discovers petroleum engineering. <clears throat> it's a fine essay. It's not one that, that stood out for me, but I had to go back and read it. But these two essays, these next two that I'm going to share with you, stood out for me. So one of his other essays, he writes, he has to write about like um, sort of just your background and sort of your perspective, you know, what is your perspective on life and how is it different from others? So he writes this very short essay uh, to um, one of the, as one of the supplements for one of the schools. And he uses the term whitewashed Latino. And what he's sharing is very true and authentic. Um, if I remember correctly, both of his parents were born in Mexico and uh, they come here and obviously they're trying to, as, as maybe it resonated with me because it reminded me of my own family, but come here and probably don't speak a ton of English in the home. I mean, a ton of Spanish in the home um, because they want him to speak um, you know, fluent English and giving him everything they can to, to make sure he has the tools and resources to be successful. So he says, I'm part of this group of friends that are whitewashed Latinos because we've spent our lives at private school. And the, the fact that you can kind of giggle about that is because it's so real. It's real and raw and it's authentic to him. So he goes on to sort of describe sort of the type of school he goes to and the type of um, friends he's made and the type of uh, friendships he's made with this particular group of, of students as well. And it's just simple, 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 but very honest and candid. So I definitely remember that even when I read it the begin at you know, the first time. The second essay below here, there's a there's typically a question about it, like, do you have any additional information that would help us understand any anything in your application or something like that? And Christian had a dip, a slight dip in, I want to say sophomore year, sophomore year, I think. Um, and so obviously when we read his application and we look at his transcript, we're going to see that. And if you have a dip in grades and, and somewhere on your application, it's a really good idea to make sure you um, describe what happened, what, 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 what went wrong or what, what, did, what happened in that particular semester of your high school career. Otherwise we sort of start to go off and sort of guess for you or think it was really something, you know, maybe much more serious. So don't let the reader guess what happened, really put it out there. So I just want to just get teary. Like every time I think of it, like it's so sweet, this short essay, again, a very short essay, but he talks about having fallen in love, that he fell in love. Um, I want to say as a freshman and, then she broke his heart and, and, um, and he had a really rough time in that particular semester after, after it happened. That is candid, honest, authentic teenager. It speaks the truth. So I love that he doesn't try to say like, oh, I, you know, I wasn't studying or I was, you know, whatever. Or I love that he wasn't embarrassed enough like to, to not share this. Um, because it was true. So anyway, both of those, the supplement two and the optional info, uh, from the very first time I read those essays, I still remember them. And I was like, oh, you have to let me share those essays. So there you go. Okay. So really that's it. So Christian was narrowing it down to, he earned so much scholarship dollars. And I know that was important for his family. And at the same time, um, as I said, his parents want to give him the very best. And so he did fall in love with one particular school. <laughs> it happens to be a school that did not offer him any merit aid, but they're going to see what they can do anything more. So drum roll, please. Drum roll, please. And oh, where's my, 
Maybe I can get Elvis to tell me. So let me tell you where Christian is going to land next year. He's going to land at <laughs> the University of Texas, UT Austin. I, I never get this right. So hook him horns. Uh, it's a fabulous school for what he wants to do, for what he wants to study. I can't think of a better place to be than Texas if you're wanting to be petroleum engineering. So for two days in a row now, we've had, um, yesterday was Baylor and today is UT Austin, uh, which is super, super exciting. So I just thought that I might play a little tiny bit of the, um, let's see, of the fight song, just so you guys can, again, help me. Uh, there we go. <laughs> big everything in texas is big so he's gonna have a fabulous fabulous time i just know it and i'm so excited i've been talking to his mom for several years now so i know they're all so excited all right so let's just wrap up for today oh my goodness super excited for you christian thank you thank you for spending some time with us today here at 30 teams 30 dreams destination university um, parents if you are still watching and listening oh, please if nothing else join our facebook group destination university it's for parents of all college bound teams no matter what grade or age your team is in Thirty teams please join us there if you want to learn more about the five biggest mistakes teens make in their application process or the four most common topics that they write about and don't work you can i'll drop the link in the comments here and you can watch this free tutorial it's really great it gives you some great advice you can follow us on facebook instagram and all of these videos will be ready and available later this uh, this year in june 2021 all right tomorrow we're going to meet grace this is a very special episode for me because grace has been also interning with us um, for gosh nearly a year now and so she's part of our the the dr cc family the destination family the dream college academy family the colleges because she's done so many things and she actually creates these these graphics themselves so i'm super excited for you for her to share with you and you for you to meet grace all right, so I wanna thank the team. It takes a village to make all of this happen. So thank you team for being so great and also just allowing me to uh, to interview these teens and then you do all the back, back work. Uh, a special shout out to Cosette, our lead illustrator who created Christian the cartoon today. So there you go. All right, everyone, wherever you are, may you have a happy and sunny day and join us tomorrow to meet Grace, 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern.